going to show you how to do one of the A-level biology practicals. This is required for A-level, but not for AS level. And it's using chromatography to investigate the pigments isolated from leaves of different plants. Now, the absolute best plant to do this with, in my experience, as a good example, are coleus plants because they've got these very colourful leaves that you'll see have got, clearly got quite a variety of photosynthetic pigments in different plant pigments. Remember, pigments are just coloured compounds, okay, wherever we find them. In plants, they play a really pot, important part in the light-dependent reaction of photosynthesis because it's those different coloured pigments that harvest the light energy. Now then, the first thing that you need to do here is to actually prepare a leaf extract and to do this, you're going to take a couple of little leaves off your plant, whatever you've chosen. I've got a coleus leaves here. Tear them up and put them in a, in a mortar there. Okay, now you can see I've already been doing this. Um, it's a good idea here to add, add just a pinch of sand. And then you need some kind of solvent. And the solvent for this is propanone, or in other words, acetone. So just a little bit. You don't want to put too much in because you want a nice concentrated pigment extract. So put that in there. Grind your leaves up with the sand and the acetone and you'll see that the pigments start being released. You can see into the liquid at the bottom there. Now, this does work a little bit better if you then leave that to soak for a few minutes. So it's a good idea to do that first and then put that on one side while you prepare your TLC plate. So I'm going to put that out of the way for now. Now, the next thing you are going to do, oops, wrong way is you're going to prepare and load a TLC plate. You can use chromatography paper if you like. It doesn't work quite as well, but it does work. Now, a TLC plate is actually a sheet of, you know, you can buy them in boxes, small sheets of plastic coated in a silica gel, okay? And that can be the stationary phase used in chromatography. So get yourself a TLC plate and you need to cut it into some little strips, okay, and the best size of strip to use for this is about 20 centimetres by about 4 centimetres. Now when you've cut your strip, the next thing you do, you get your ruler and a pencil, it must be a pencil, not a pen, and you draw yourself a line around 2 centimetres from the bottom of the strip. That will represent the origin, okay. Um, while you're doing this, the next thing you could also do while you're waiting for your leaves to soak is actually put your solvent, which will be the mobile phase, into whatever vessel you're going to use for your chromatography. So I am using a gas jar here, okay? Now into the bottom of that gas jar I've placed my solvent. Now the solvent in this case is five parts cyclohexane, three parts propanone, or in other words acetone, and two parts petroleum ether. So you need to put a little bit of that, about a centimetre deep at the maximum, into the bottom of your gas jar and put the lid on so that it start, it's quite volatile and you'll actually get the vapours collecting in here. Right, now to go back to the chromatogram now, the next thing we need to do is actually load this with some of our plant pigment. Now to do this, we need, and I've got some plant pigment I've poured there into a little watch glass, but you can just do it out of the mortar if you like. So what we've got here is a capillary tube that's been heated and pulled out to form a much finer tube, okay? And if you dip that into your extract, you'll actually draw a little bit of the extract into there. And then you need to start carefully loading it onto the origin line that you've drawn on your paper like that. Now sometimes, you know, people are told to put a dot in the middle, but for this it works better if you actually just dot along there and you produce a kind of line of plant pigment, sorry, plant extract at the bottom there, okay? You need to then let it dry and then you need to repeat the same process so that you're building up a very concentrated line of leaf extract at the bottom of your TLC plate there. Now, here is one of those that I started making earlier. I've done this about six times to get a very, very concentrated line and allow it to dry a little bit between each application. You need to be very patient and do this for maybe 30 times so that it's very, very concentrated there so you know you're going to get your plant pigments. Now, once you've done that and it's dried, you can actually um, 
place that, and I'll do that one now, inside the gas jar, okay, with the solvent. To be honest, it's better if it doesn't touch the side, so it's better down there, okay? And you're then going to leave that on the bench top and you're going to see the solvent slowly soak up the TLC plate and carry the pigments with it, okay? So remember the TLC plate is what we call the stationary phase here. The mobile phase is our solvent which is going to dissolve the pigments in the plant extract and carry them up the stationary phase, carry them up the TLC plate. Okay, so you're going to leave that now and you're going to watch it carefully until you see that the solvent has travelled all the way up to about maybe a centimetre or two from the top of the TLC strip. Right, I've got one here that I set up earlier. It still hasn't reached the top, okay? But you'll see the solvent's about halfway up now. Okay, if I hold a bit of coloured paper behind, you might see that a little bit better. Okay, you can see the solvent soaking up there. You can actually see it's, you know, a couple of coloured bands where it's carrying the pigment with it. Okay, so let that run till just before the top. Now, when it gets near the top of the paper, you need to actually remove the TLs, the, um, the strip from there. And this is the kind of thing you'll see. And as soon as you remove it, get your pencil and you need to mark the solvent front, so the point that the solvent's reached. Okay, and then you need to leave this to dry and let it dry naturally. Often you're told to use a hairdryer or put it in a warm place, but actually I find that makes the pigment spots actually fade. Okay, now, once you've allowed your chromatogram to dry, you can have a look at your spots and you can actually work out what they are. So to do this, what we have to do is work out an RF value for each patch of pigment that we've got on our chromatogram there, okay? To work an RF value out, it's very simple. It's simply the distance moved by the pigment. So you get your ruler and you measure to the farthest end of each pigment spot. So you see we've got a kind of grey coloured spot there. So I would measure from the origin line, where the pigment was applied at the beginning, to the far end of the pigment spot. So measure that. And then you also need to measure the distance moved by the solvent from the origin up to the solvent front that you marked when you removed your TLC plate, okay, from the solvent. So it's simply the distance moved by the pigment divided by the distance moved by the solvent and that will give you an RF value for each pigment that you can see. Now that on its own means nothing, so what you have to do then is compare your RF values to standard RF values for this technique. OK, so you'll see and, you know, often you don't get exactly the same value, but you're looking for the closest one. So, for example, if we've got a value of 0 0.50, a greenish spot, we would know that that was probably chlorophyll B. OK, now, you know that you've got your calculation right if you get a value of less than zero. An RF value is always less than zero. So if you get a value of one or above, you know you've actually basically uh, calculated it the wrong way around. Stop, Richard.